India is passing through a very important time in its history. It is one of the world's biggest and youngest populations. Everyone knows that India's economy is growing very quickly and has a lot of potential. However, the country is having trouble capitalizing on this chance to become an economic giant. If you can't believe it, India used to have one of the top 15 economies in the world in the mid-1980s, but it fell out of that list for more than 20 years as countries like China grew faster. That being said, this setback didn't stop India's progress towards economic growth, and her determination paid off. By 2022, India had one of the world's top five economies, and by 2050, it's only expected to be behind China and the USA. These predictions, however, are based on India's current strategic position for progress. This position has been built up over the last 15 years, showing steady improvement in the country's story of growth, development, and poverty reduction. This has led to India's goal of playing a bigger role on the global stage to keep up with the changes in the world's order. As expected, the number of countries supporting India's goal to become one of the most important players in global politics has grown so fast that it's hard to keep track of them all. However, there are still concerns about whether the country will fully take advantage of the economic growth it's been experiencing, or if things will go back to how they were after the mid-1980s. Most economists say that India's biggest problem right now is that it is behind in areas like human capital, schooling, public health, vocational training programs, and the relatively smaller percentage of female workers. With all of these problems in the country's economy, a lot of people are asking if this century will be the one that defines the country, or if it will waste its chance to become a world economic power. Let us look more closely at what's going on. One thing that makes India's economy look good is that its GDP growth is strong compared to other big economies. Their GDP grew by an impressive 7% in 2022, while the world economy grew by just over 3%. This was much higher than the growth rates of even the biggest countries, like the USA, China, and the EU27. Just gonna pause here for a few seconds to let you guys know that if you like our channel, please don't hesitate to show your support by subscribing to the channel. Anyway, India's growing number of young people is also good for its business. In contrast to industrialized countries that have problems with their aging populations, they have a lot of young people. In fact, India is expected to have more people than China by 2060, with 1.7 billion people living there, more than half of them under 30 years old. With its large population, India is in a great situation to become an economic powerhouse, and this demographic advantage could be the thing that pushes it to the top in the near future. Interestingly, India has the ability to become an economic powerhouse because of its many good factors, such as its large, educated, and young labor force. Because India has so many benefits, some experts say that the country is in a better position than ever, even though its recent economic growth wasn't, and still isn't unprecedented. Yes, the current growth rate is lower than it was in the 2000s, but these experts say that India is in a better position now than it was in 2003, when the country first started seeing fast economic growth because it has dealt with problems within its own society and made changes to its economy. India has also been proud to show off its growing economic strength whenever the chance has come up. This was clear during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's recent state visit to the US, where he talked about India's economic rise and how the government has been focusing on improving infrastructure in cities and spending a lot of money on capital projects to help the economy grow. Even though these steps have led to some good things, we can see that the way the economy is set up causes problems that are similar to those that richer countries face. And if you've been paying attention, you know that these problems aren't as clear at first because India's strong economics hide the debt of its social problems. India does have a lot of people and a lot of land, but the GDP per capita shows big differences in the economy that can't be fixed by looking at India's GDP numbers alone. For example, their biggest problem is that they don't create enough jobs, especially for young people who will be joining a jobless market in 20 to 30 years. And when will this problem be solved successfully? Well, no one knows because strangely enough, better education often leads to higher unemployment rates in India. This means that while the overall unemployment rate is about 7%, the rate for people with advanced degrees is more than twice that. People with some education have a hard time getting work, but the situation is much worse for people with little or no education. This is because a lot of jobs in India are in agriculture, which means that a lot of people with little schooling are working in low paying jobs. Another problem is the difference between men and women in the workforce. In India, only about 20% of women are working, while 70% of men are. What do you think the best way to solve this problem is? We think that improving human capital outcomes and creating better job chances for people should be at the top of any plan for India's employment sector growth. It should be the other way around. The more degrees someone has, the more likely they are to get the best paying jobs. 
Now let's talk about India's concerns in regards to the environment. Unfortunately, the country has a lot of problems with the environment, just like it does with schooling and jobs. There's no doubt that many of these problems can be solved. The problem is that India has a hard time making the changes that are needed to solve them. For example, it is well known that India has some of the lowest carbon emissions per person of all the major countries. It is only slightly higher than China, the USA, and the EU. Even so, India is still one of the biggest sources of carbon emissions in the world. India has also put a lot of money into solar energy and is still pushing people to use electric cars, but coal is still an important source of energy for the country. Up to 71% of India's power comes from coal-fired power plants, which are also the main source of greenhouse gas emissions. Air pollution is also a big problem. Even though the government is trying hard to cut down on pollution, 11 of the 12 cities in the world with the highest amounts of PM 2.5, the world's most harmful particle matter, are in India. At first, the problem can't be solved without accurate data, but you got it. India's government isn't very open, so there isn't any accurate data either. So, in the end, economic growth might not be enough to solve this problem. This is because India's environmental problems are happening while the country is still growing. Unlike North and Western Europe, where these problems were solved after the countries became industrialized. Since these two goals can't be at odds with each other, balancing economic growth and environmental health will take strategic management. As we look past India's problems and its economy, one big thing that stands out is the chance of a change in global power in the country's favor. The rise of China has made it clear that it will be the world's leader in the 21st century. But now, people are starting to wonder if India will do the same or something similar in the same century. For the same reason that Japan was in the late 20th century, India has the capacity to be a major power. India's status as the world's biggest democracy makes this title even more valuable. This is because, in addition to its military power, India's soft power, which comes from its harmonious and rich cultural heritage, helps it become an economic powerhouse very quickly. Interestingly, India's foreign policy has also been stable since it became independent, and it has stayed a leader in groups such as BRICS, the G77, and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. They also actively contribute to UN peacekeeping missions. This means that the country thinks that peaceful coexistence should be the first goal, even though it had military conflicts with neighbors like China and Pakistan. What do these facts show then? India has what it takes to become a major global economic force. Its young population, growing economy, and importance in world politics. But the country is now at a crucial juncture that needs to be successfully navigated so that India can fully realize its potential as a major global player and nothing less in the years to come. For similar content, feel free to look at some of the other clips on your screen. Have a good one.